In the meantime, preparations for hosting NATO, a 28-country military alliance summit, is no small order. Street barricades are being erected, public transportation slowed or even canceled, a large no-fly zone above the city, and in general, a hope for peace, a point that the police are efforting. Our ultimate goal is uh, that there will be a non-event, there will be a boring uh, event that... Uh, that there will be a non-event, there will be a boring uh, event, that there won't be anything happening, that means everything's going smooth. Hosting the NATO summit is risky business. If protesters get ugly, they become the story, and the city may take another black eye, like in 1968. But if all goes well, then President Barack Obama's home city will come out looking like a picture postcard for large-scale international events. At this point, only time will decide. Our ultimate goal is uh, that there will be a non-event, there will be a boring uh, event, that there won't be anything happening, that means everything's going smooth. Today is Monday, May 21st, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013. Um, I'm not sure if you guys noticed um, what I pointed out during this video when they were tearing down the flag. Uh, what was it besides the NATO's, you know, basically their swastika symbol? Um, was what was this the fidelity in the background you can see it in the background so I mean these people are are tearing down a banner that says you know NATO with a big swastika on it saying peace and security that's our mission so it's uh, it is a very over reference book and movie 1984 but that really uh, you know kind of portrays it well it should be blatantly obvious right that that this uh, organization is not set up to carry out, uh, um, to force or allow or maintain peace and security in the world. It's to conquer the world, one sovereign nation at a time. I mean, how many, how much you ever hear of, how many stories you hear of, of, of people that are actually for all this stuff that are there um, supporting this, right? 
How many people are actually there saying, yeah, all right, NATO, go NATO. Yeah, all right, we love this this last war in Afghanistan. It was a great one. Well, you don't you don't see that many. That's my point. So, um, but I will get into a story where the vet about the veterans that threw their medals, uh, basically whatever. I don't know where they threw them, but they basically got rid of them in protest, whatever the wars that they were fighting in. And um, you'll you'll I'll go through a comment of of a you know a Vietnam veteran or something like that it was in twenty years, and he's basically you know he supports all of it. He supports all of it. He can't just let his ego go. And, re and, and, and and say, I was wrong, you know, I was wrong. I was brought up and brainwashed my entire life to say, you know what, this country is great, it's all about freedom, and if I join in the military, I'm going to fight for freedom. Because well, that's what we're, we're, we're hit over the head constantly right with that, right? And then when you go to boot camp and you come back from personal experience, everyone's all, you know, um, all up on you, right? Oh, good for you, good for you, good for you, great for you, you're so good, you're so patriotic, right? Well, that's why you kept doing it, you know. And then, of course, there's a little incentive called desertion in, in that, where if you don't do it at a certain point when you real, you're realizing that it's wrong, well, <laughs> there's guys that are doing that, and they can't even come back in the United States. Yet you got all these crap bags here in the country that are still here. All right, so I'm ready to get going here. Uh, that's that, that little um, that banner once more uh, was what? Uh, organization. Uh, for the Atlantic Nord. It was basically OTAN. So you saw NATO and you saw it backwards. I was like, what the hell is that? And it says OTAN, um, which is basically in France. And of course, you have right in the background, as all of this is going on, just, you know, peaceful protesting of, uh, of this military police force is what? You see fidelity uh, with the pyramid and the capstone. That's the elites. And that's, of course, the... Uh, the light of Lucifer, Lucifer, or um, Osiris, basically the doctrine, and uh, this is their, you know, speaking of double speak, fidelity investments, right? Fidelity is all about what, uh, about staying uh, uh, true to, uh, you know, a partner, right? If you're a, a business partner, we're gonna stay true to you and honest, and we're not gonna go to any outside partners. Well, most of these are all in bed with the same uh, uh, scams and stuff like that, right? So they're not, uh, there's not fidelity in that relationship. Uh, you know, the CEOs and all that uh, usually will, when they uh, scam all of their clients or some clients out, uh, you know, the people at the top usually get paid uh, extra for it, a bonus. So, um, and then you have companies like Prudential, right? With a big iceberg uh, hanging out of the water, like treacherous, right? And uh, what is Prudent mean? Well, wise or judicious in practical affairs, discreet, right? So it's very discreet to have an iceberg uh, uh, out of the water, right? You're going to hit it. In other words, no risk. As this one says, tropical with icebergs. So it's all double speak, you know, the Federal Reserve, not federal at all. A reserve, well, they're not like holding a reserve of gold or anything. So um, these groups and entities that do carry out all these schemes, these frauds, on uh, all these people, they need to protect their interests, right? They need to protect the uh, the the politicians, the traitor scumbags that sit there and sell your future out, um, and they need to protect them. And so the police, the go-betweens, the black and white checkerboards, you know, probably many of them are Masons with their little Luciferian stars, are going to protect that order because they are a fraternal order of police. So they came out uh, doing what the Chicago police do well. If you've ever walked across that bridge, you know I've been actually tracked right there. Last time I was there, I've never been there again, just looking at a little thing right there and had a, a homeless guy come right up to me past all these different people, hundreds of people come right up to us and ask us for change. And um, that was after being tracked around. I've already told this story, being tracked from the, um, the uh, Shedd Aquarium Museum. Started right there and then it just, uh, even guys with like military clothes, like a reservist and that, just tracking us, following us around, keeping tabs, and they would change. They would change as we go through little different uh, areas of the city. And you get a new little rover. I call them like a roving um, uh, snoop, basically. And uh, there's cameras hanging off all those private buildings to to protect their interests. So the NATO summit will come and go, but Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Um, has authorized a new normal of militarized social control in Chicago. So this is the London Guardian that's recognizing this. 
So it says here, courtesy of Emmanuel, several months ago began implementing new draconian anti-protest measures. Uh, Chicago has gone on security lockdown starting early Friday. It says here that the police began shutting down uh, prohibiting cars, bikes, and pedestrians, miles and miles of highways and roads in the heart of Chicago to create a security perimeter around the downtown of McCormick Place, and the McCormick Place is huge, uh, where the NATO summit is being held. Another interesting note, uh, last time we were there, it was the McCormick Place. I remember they had this whole new section on the western end of uh, the loop or whatever it is, the Stevenson, and uh, that place, it really is huge, but they have a whole new section, and it's weird because we couldn't get out of there. It's like we were trying to go around it, and it was like, it was a complex, and I was like, man, this place looks perfect for, like, um, a centralized location for, like, FEMA or Homeland Security. I mean, it was very, very, just the structure and the layout was for uh, a federal, you know, a very federalized a government entity of all of them to be operating out of and it was funny because then they did they had the White House's uh, Secret Service and everything uh, working right out of there I didn't even know that until now so all right so I mentioned this on Friday about how this is going to happen uh, this false flag uh, whatever basically busting people calling them anarchist uh, some kind of terror act of terror right that doesn't actually happen basically a sting operation well it happened and they were anarchists it was a sting operation it was right before the thing even started the nato summit and it was used to what uh, even though the fbi said there was no credible threat well they were already he must have said that after they had already arrested these guys or been working on the sting operation the feds so he lied there was a threat um but uh, they did that so that they can make it seem like they actually uh you know they actually are fighting this war on terror that doesn't exist except for the terror that's carried out by the state so it legitimized everything that they did because they caught these uh these guys for what uh, making uh, beer so police raid chicago apartment sees beer making equipment this is the official original story that came out it says here darren as anusek said he walked to chicago from philadelphia to participate in occupy protests only to be seized by police in a raid on an apartment so I'm not going to go into de too much detail because I want to keep moving here, but, you know, it's it's all over there. You can check it out. Links will be posted. I'm sure most of you already are aware or read this. Chicago police accused of planting evidence in Molotov cocktail plot. Well, they did. They actually gave them all the materials for a Molotov cocktail and then called that um, a, um, uh, having explosive materials for terrorist, act uh, terrorist uh, uh, activity. I remember, I even used the word entrapping. And that's what, exactly what they did. So terrorism plot or entrapment, the case of NATO 3, this is from Truth Out. So then to Chicago has more details on alleged terror plot, two more suspects in custody. So this is how this article or headline should be uh, tagged. Police clash with protesters at the end of anti-protest uh, to make themselves feel like they're important and like they had to be there. And I just read this. It was a few blocks away from where the pres where President Obama and other world leaders were meeting. So they do this, right? They do this. They create this uh, so that they could uh, uh, basically keep them away. And let's not uh, forget what else helped make this. The picture-perfect um, NATO summit of, of peace was the activists that were disappeared and abducted without warrant or charges prior to the summit. So when the veterans hurled their medals over the fence, uh, they said... The enemies, not 7,000 miles away, the enemies are right here in the boardrooms. It's the politicians, it's the corporate executives. In which uh, another veteran, an older one, said, what? There's, there is much disgrace as the veterans back in Vietnam days that did the same thing, said retired Army First said, uh, Sergeant who served 22 years and is a military blogger, probably working for the government too now. If these uh, veterans aren't proud of the service they did, uh, then they should have never have accepted them medals in the first place because they were given a pat on the back said they were good, right? But if you don't like it, you could just get out. So as far as what was covered, it was what I said. No rush for an exit from Afghanistan. It was all out of Afghanistan, NATO chief. And don't buy the, the thing about them leaving in 2013. That was just for show. NATO seeks unity on keeping the Afghan war. Says France is out, but Obama Rasmussen pushed for others to stay. Good for, you know, contracts and that. It says here, NATO activates missile shield, reaches out to Russia. So Russia is going to like that a lot, as they've already grown cold recently. And I think Putin even snubbed him by not even going. NATO orders five new drones worth $1.7 billion. Then NATO moves to share the cost of military hardware. 
to share the cost of weapons and equipment at a time when member states face shrinking defense budget. And who's going to pay for these drones and all this stuff? Oh, Afghans, Karzai, thanks Obama for your taxpayers' money. This is GGN and I'm Darko.